Michael Schumacher going to make a good start and cut across the front of Mika Hacken, and he's famous for that. Three lights, four lights, five laps. Pause. Go, go, go. Number one, Wickelhock, second in the BMW. Third is Alan Menu in the Renault. Behind him is Steve Soper, out of Dufferston. Peter McIntyre's the right-hander. This is really close. Through the chicane. And oh, oh, off. It's Tarquini. What happened? Gabriele Tarquini in the Alfa Romeo. Thank heavens he's safe. Out of the car, rushing to safety. And the crowd have shown their appreciation that he's all right. But it's a very dazed and battered Gabriele leading against the barrier. Pete Dam wins. Looks through a completely clean windscreen. And that's the big advantage, of course, of being in front. And that's the big disadvantage of getting your line wrong. Into the pit lane comes Andrea De Cesaris, the man who's won more Grand Prix than anybody else in the history of Grand Prix racing without actually winning one of them. Mazda on the left, Mazda on the right, Vauxhall in the middle. They're absolutely together, side by side. They're very close, in fact, they touch, bang, bang. And that is Neil, and that is a very big one indeed. Roll, roll, roll again, all the way down the straight. And Harvey's right behind, Harvey's attacking Cleland, there's Harvey, there's Cleland. So Cleland has stayed ahead, but Sofa is ahead of the Vauxhall. So John Cleland is sandwiched between the two BMWs, I'm going for first, says John Cleland. Michael Schumacher, who seems to me to be pacing himself calmly and in his in, and, and in his experienced way to yet another victory. If it is, it will be his 48th Grand Prix in his 150th year. Back again with John Cleland, 22 times a winner in the Touring Car Championship, but seemingly not today. Look at Sugden Spoiler as they go into... Oh, wow! That is, that is Simone, straight into the Armco. That was a 100 mile an hour crash, and it looks to me as though the little Italian is perfectly okay. Well, out of the car, and that's a my car, says Rosso. It was indeed. All I can tell you at the moment is that David Coulthard, he keeps on accelerating and closing up to David Coulthard. He's... That's Jeff Allen ahead in the box, and he's been hit. He's been hit, and he's off at terrific speed, onto the grass, into the armco, across the track, onto the outside of the track. That was a very lucky one indeed. Look at his front wheel. Oh dear. OK to take a picture, mate. Jeff Allen is not very happy, I don't think. Oh dear me, he is not. Look at that. Cleland is off, into the gravel trap. There'll be gravel everywhere in that box hall. What off, what off? Oh, hi, John, the new, you are off indeed. And here's a replay. And watch our cameraman as we head straight towards him. Oh. He's a runner. And Prost has yet to take his fellow Frenchman, René Arnoux, who says, the reason I'm going so slow these days is that I'm used to turbo cars, and these normally aspirated engine cars are a very different kettle of fish to drive, he says. And all I can say to that is bullshit. So, anyway, there goes Arnu in the Ford-powered Ligier. First 250cc British Grand Prix to be held at Donington. And after eight rounds, the surprise leader is the West German veteran Reinhold Roth, riding a German. It's I'm knowing exactly where Nigel Mansell is, because he can see him in his earphone. Uh, see him in his see him in his mirrors. <laughs> you can see Nigel Mansell in his mirrors, knows exactly what the score is, and will be able to pace himself from the front. That's a guaranteed goal for Paul Murray. Absolutely for sure. <laughs>